Okay, so here we go. So I talked um, a little bit about doing live reading. Anyway, I plan to do some for my actual books, but I don't actually have any copies of um, Violent Violet right now. So I decided to go to Goodwill and look for the cheapest book that I could find with the most potential for embarrassment. <laughs> I don't know why. And um, I had a couple people suggest that I read from Fifty Shades of Grey. And so $1.99. Now, first, let me say that I, I don't um, have an issue with the success of this book. I think good for her, E.L. James. Good for her. I'm sure she had a blast writing this book. So I'm very happy for her success. Uh, I will say that I have not read it. I read an excerpt to just be flipping through and finding random parts to read. Um, I did try to watch the movie once and it just annoyed me because I kept thinking, um, who would put up with somebody treating them like shit? But that's just me. I look really weird in this. What does this say? Okay. Anyway. Here we go. Let's see the description. When literature student Anastasia Steele goes to interview young entrepreneur Christian Gay. <laughs> Christian Gray. Oh, this is going to be rough. She encounters a man who is beautiful, brilliant, and intimidating. The unworldly, innocent Anna is startled to realize she wants this man. And despite his unable to resist Anna's quiet beauty, wit, and independent spirit, Gray admits he wants her too, but on his own terms. Shocked yet thrilled by Gray's singular erotic tastes, Anna hesitates. For all the trappings of success, his multinational businesses, his vast wealth, his loving family, Gray is a man tormented by the daring, passionately physical affair. Anna discovers Christian Gray's secrets and explores her own dark desires. Erotic, amusing, and deeply moving, the Fifty Shades trilogy is a tale that will obsess you, possess you, and stay with you forever. I hope not. I don't want to be living this forever. All right. Let's see here. Should I start with chapter one? No. I'm just going to skip through for some smut or something. Mm. This is going to be hard. Bad stuff's got to be back here, right? Here's an email from Christian Gray. Subject, your new computer. Date, May 22nd, 2011. Use as discussed. I look forward to dinner Wednesday. Happy to answer any questions before then via email. Share. <laughs> Whatever. Oh, all right. Chapter 12. For the first time in my life, I voluntarily go for a run. I find my nasty never used in a t-shirt. I put my hair in pigtails. Ooh, I missed something. I plug in my eye of that marvel of technology. I can't sit in front of that of that marvel of technology and look at or read any disturbing material. What? I need to expend some of this excess in innerv innervating, enervating energy. Never heard of that word. Heathman, I'll be able to run one mile. Kate is walking from her car as I head out the door. She nearly drops her shopping bags when she sees me. Anna Steele in sneakers. I wave and don't stop for the Inquisition. I need some serious alone time. Snow patrol blaring in my ears. I set off into the opal and aquamarine dusk. I pace through the park. 
what am I going to do? I want him. But on his terms, I just don't know. Perhaps I should negotiate what I want. Go through that ridiculous contract line by line and snow that. I figure that is just... I figured that it just sets up parameters of the relationship. It illustrates what I can expect from him and what he expects from me, my total submission. Am I prepared to give him that? Am I even capable? All right, I can't read any more of that part. Let's look for this other. Let's look for some. Do, 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 do. Let's see here. What? I can't even. All right, let's start here. Same chapter, a couple pages farther. Uh, I felt that your email warranted a reply in person, he explains dryly. I open my mouth and then close it again, twice. The joke is on me. Never in this or any alternative universe did I expect him to drop everything and turn up here. May I sit, he asks, his eyes now dancing with humor. Thank heavens, maybe he'll see the funny side. I nod, the power of speech remains elusive. Christian Gray is sitting on my bed. I wondered what your bedroom would look like, he says. I feel like some shenanigans are about to happen. I glance around it, plotting an escape route. No, there's still only the door or window. My room is functional but cozy, sparse, white wicker furniture, wicker. Ever try to keep that shit clean? And a white iron double bed with a patchwork quilt made by mother when she was in her folksy Americana quilting phase. It's all pale blue and cream. It's very serene and peaceful in here, he murmured. Not at the moment. Not with you here. Finally, my medulla oblongata recalls its purpose. I breathe. How? He smiles at me. I'm still at the Heathman. I know that. Would you like a drink? Politeness wins out over everything else, I'd like to say. No, thank you, Anastasia. He smiles, a dazzling, crooked smile. His head cocked slightly to one side. Well, I might need one. So it was nice knowing me. Holy cow, is he offended? I stared down at my fingers. How am I going to dig myself out of this? This probably would make more sense if I actually read the book. Eh, let's see, skip a phone. I thought you'd reply by email. My voice is small, pathetic. Are you biting your lower lip deliberately? He asked darkly. Oh, are you biting your lower lip deliberately? He asks darkly. I blink up at him, gasping, freeing my lip. I wasn't aware I was biting my lip, I murmur softly. My heart is pounding. I can feel that pull, that delicious electricity between us, charging, filling the space with static. He is sitting so close to me, his eyes dark, smoky gray, his elbows resting on his knees, his legs apart, leaning forward. He slowly undoes one of my pigtails, his fingers freeing my hair. My breathing is shallow and I cannot move. I watch hypnotized as his second pigtail and pulling the hair tie, he loosens the braid with his long, silk, skilled fingers. So you decided on some exercise, he breathes, his voice soft and melodious. His fingers gently tuck my hair behind my ear. Why, Anastasia? His fingers circle my ear and very softly, rhythmically, he tugs my earlobe. Just so sexual. I need a time to think, I whisper. I'm all deer, headlights, mouth, flame, bird, snake, and he knows exactly what he's doing to me. Think about what, Anastasia? You. <laughs> she decided that it was nice knowing me. Do you mean knowing me in the biblical sense? Oh, shit. I flush. She forgot, she forgot to put that one in. Um, uh, what do you call that? Never mind. I didn't think you were familiar with the Bible. I went to Sunday school, Anastasia. It taught me a great deal. I don't remember reading about nipple clamps in the Bible. Perhaps you were taught with a modern translation. His lips arch with a trace of a smile, and my eyes are drawn to his mouth. Well, that I should come and remind you how nice it was knowing me. Holy crap, I stare at him open mouth and his fingers move from my ear to my chin. Why do I look so scary? 
What do you say to that, Miss Steele? His eyes ablaze at me. Oh, wait, no, not ablaze. They're just blazing. His challenge intrinsic in his stare. His lips are parted. He's waiting, coiled to strike. Desire, acute liquid and smoldering, combusts up in my belly. I take preemptive action and launch myself at him. Somehow he moves. I have no idea how. And in the blink of an eye, I'm on the bed. Pinned beneath him, my arms stretched out and held above my head, his free hand clutching my face and his mouth finding mine. His tongue is in my mouth, claiming and possessing me, and I revel in the force he uses. I feel him against the length of my body. He wants me, and this does strange, delicious things to my insides. Not Kate in her little bikinis, not one of the 15, not evil Mrs. Robinson, me. This beautiful man wants me. My inner goddess glows so bright she could light up Portland. <laughs> he stops kissing me and opening my eyes. I find him gazing down at me. Trust me, he breathes. I nod wide eyed, my heart bouncing my, off my ribs my blood thundering through my body. Oh, I can't. I just can't read this. <laughs> oh my God. All right, let's find something else. <laughs> I totally just cock-blocked them. Ugh, what is this? Oh, what's this? Uh, let's see. My address catches him unawares. I can tell by his sharp intake of breath. Good luck with your move tomorrow, Anastasia. His voice is soft and we're both hanging on the phone like teenagers, neither wanting to hang up. You hang up, I whisper. Finally, I sense his smile. No, you hang up. And I know he's grinning. I don't want to. Neither do I. Were you very angry with me? Yes. Are you still? No. So you're not a brave moment kind of guy. I've noticed. You can hang up now, Miss Steele. Do you really want me to, sir? Go to bed, Anastasia. Yes, sir. We both stay on the line. Do you ever think you'll be able to do what you're told? He's amused and exasperated at once. Maybe. See after Sunday. And I press end on the phone. I don't know. So this is funny because isn't this supposed to be like uh, Edward from Twilight fanfic or something? Oh, I don't see him acting this way. Ugh, this has got to be a boring video. I don't know. Let me try to find something else. Let's see here. Hmm. There's all these freaking emails in here. That's annoying. Let's see here. Is there anything dirty here? Okay, here's some. <laughs> I blink at him, fish into my jeans pockets, and pull out a hair elastic. Put your hair up, he orders softly. I do as he asks. Wasn't, he, wasn't she already doing that? It's warm and sultry beside the bath, and my camisole starts to stick. He leans over and shuts off the faucet, leading me back into the first part of the bathroom. He stands behind me as we face the wall-sized mirror above the two glass sinks. Take your sandals off, he murmurs, and I oblige, quickly dropping them to the sandstone floor. Lift up your arms, he breathes. I do as I'm told, and he lifts my camisole over my head so that I'm topless, standing in front of him. Not taking his eyes off mine, he reaches around and undoes the top button of my jeans and the zipper. I'm going to have you in the bathroom, Anastasia. Ooh. -hoo. Leaning down, he kisses my neck. I, this is, like, boring. Maybe this wouldn't be so boring if I actually read the rest of the book. Thoughts? Ew. <laughs> please, let my, please let my hands go, I whisper. Don't touch me, he pleads, releasing my wrist. He grabs my hips, my hips, my hips. Clasping the bath ledge, I move up and then down slowly, 
opening my eyes to gaze at him. He's watching me, his mouth open, his breathing halted, stilted, his tongue between his teeth. He looks so dot, 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 hot. We're wet and slippery and moving against each other. I lean down and kiss him. Trying to think of the logistics of that. He closes his eyes. Tentatively, I bring my hands up to his head and run my fingers through his hair, not taking my lips from his mouth. This is allowed. He likes this. I like this. And we move together. I tug his hair. Ugh. I'm not good at this. <laughs> I can't with this, guys. I can't. Is this all the book is? Like one sex scene to the next? I don't know. I've never read it. I assume so. Okay, I guess I'm going to end this here. I think this was a failed attempt at reading Fifty Shades of Grey. Like, as soon as I start to get to the good parts, I lose interest. Is that normal? I'm sorry if I've let you all down. I'm very sorry. At any rate, you should go find your copy of Fifty Shades of Grey by E.L. James. Put another dollar in her pocket, yo. <laughs> Stupid. <laughs>